for many years, I struggled to answer the question, if when we believe in Jesus, our sins are forgiven and we're bound for heaven, then why do Jesus and Paul say that we'll be judged by what we've done? If grace comes with no strings attached, then is discipleship optional? Well, the reason we struggle to understand these questions is that we have an inadequate understanding of something called grace. But when we understand grace, it all starts to make sense. So let's talk about it. In a previous video, we talked about what it means to be saved, for Jesus to be our Savior. Now, over the years, I think there's been a misunderstanding about what this means. The misunderstanding is about a word in the Bible that's translated as grace. Now, we most often think about grace as the same thing as poise or beauty. But the Bible means something different. When the Bible talks about God's grace, it's more like favor. It often refers to God's willingness to overlook our sin. And the Bible says that grace is free. So, people often misunderstand, thinking that all we have to do is tell God that we accept his grace, that we accept his forgiveness, and we have no other obligations to him. But can this be true? Because if it's true, then why should I have anything to do with God after that? Why should I follow him if I already have his forgiveness? Well, the word in the Bible that's translated as grace is the Greek word for gift. And it's not a theological term. It's just your common, everyday word for gift. Now, in our culture, we think the greatest gift is one that's given with no strings attached. In fact, it's seen as manipulative for me to give you a gift hoping to get something in return. And so people say that if God's grace is really free, then we can be saved and forgiven and never really give God another thought. But this, of course, misunderstands how the Bible thought about grace. To understand what the Bible means, you have to understand something called the patron-client relationship. Let me explain, and hopefully this makes more sense. Let's say there was a baker in a town in the Middle East. Bakers tended to be lower class. One day, that baker's house burned down. Well, there was no insurance or government assistance, and so he was pretty much out of luck. But a wealthy official in town named Bob heard the news about the baker's house. Now, he knows the baker, he knows that he's an honorable man with a good reputation, and that he bakes great bread. And so he approaches the baker and offers to pay to rebuild his house. Now, of course, the baker is very appreciative of the offer. It could actually save his life. It certainly saved his livelihood. But he grew up in that society, and so he knows that the offer to rebuild his house is more than just that. It's an invitation into a relationship. He knows that Bob wants to be his benefactor, or what we might call patron. In other words, the offer comes with strings attached. If he accepts the offer, he would then be associated with Bob, probably for the rest of his life. And that's neither good nor bad, necessarily. That's just the way it is. Well, fortunately, the baker knows Bob to be an honorable man with a good family. And so he has no trouble accepting the offer. And in return, he'll acknowledge him publicly. When people come into his store to buy bread, he'll often talk about how honest and generous Bob is. Not only that, but every day when the first batch of bread comes out of the oven, he'll send his daughter over with the first couple of loaves. And in the future, if the baker needs a loan or runs into some other trouble, he knows that he can always go to Bob and Bob will take care of him. Now, there are a few important details about these kinds of relationships at that time. First, it was a good idea to always be picky about who you took on as a client or benefactor. If Bob had been a tax collector, the baker would have probably thought twice about accepting the offer in the first place. If the baker was known for being a dishonest businessman, Bob would have never made the offer because you didn't want to be associated with a disreputable person. A second thing to consider is this is that to accept the offer of a benefactor and not return a favor, whether it was gratitude or public acknowledgement or acts of kindness, wasn't just rude, 
it was considered immoral. It was a sign of bad character. In fact, here's what the Roman philosopher Seneca wrote. He wrote, there will always be murderers, tyrants, thieves, adulterers, abductors, temple robbers, and traitors. But lower in rank than all of these is the ungrateful, without which hardly any great misdeed has grown. Now, here's why I tell you this story. You see, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to grace, we are the baker and our house burned down. We are in dire straits. The problem is, is that we are not that honorable. In fact, the reason our house burned down is because we got drunk and knocked over a torch during a drunken brawl when we got caught cheating at a high stakes poker game. Okay, that's what sin is. But God is so great that he sends Jesus to come and to rebuild our house by hand. And of course, he's not picky. He pays for all the materials and even upgrades our baking equipment. We did nothing to deserve it, and God is taking a great risk because if we accept it, we are tied to him, and his reputation is tied to us. And by the way, with all of the scandals and things happening in the church today and throughout history, I sometimes wonder how much God actually benefits from us. But God's love for us is so great that out of his own generosity, he attached himself to us. But now, we are responsible for our part. He asks that in return, we worship him privately and publicly, that we tell other people about him, that we offer mercy to the poor and marginalized, and that we see to it that we live with good character that reflects well on him. So, long story short, grace is unmerited, but it's not unconditional. When we're saved, we're saved into a relationship with the living God, and he has promised to care for us and lead us down the right path all the way to eternity. 